The story behind Natalie Sid, the founder and chief executive of the software services firm ASTAR, is a reasonably common one among successful entrepreneurs. Born poor to parents who worked as humble noodle sellers in Ipoh, this is the story of how Natalie rose from such humble beginnings uh, to becoming the sole owner of a company competing in one of the most competitive sectors in the tech industry, software. This is a story. But before we begin, one small request if possible. If you're inspired or learned something or derived some value from the content that I produce on this channel, if you can, please do like the video that you watch, subscribe to the channel. It's a huge help if you can do this, so I can continue to reach out to people like Natalie to share their stories so that we can all learn from each other and hopefully make the world a better place. Thanks again and take care. So Natalie, uh, we've been trying to get together and do this for quite a long time and I'm quite glad that we can finally do this. Um, we've been wanting to talk to you for a number of reasons and it's, it's because um, what you do in your business is quite unique, right? Um, not only are you a, a tech entrepreneur, but you're also a sole f um, owner of the business and also female. So that, those are quite difficult filters to go through and, and succeed in, if you like, because it's, it's a quite a challenging industry, a, as we all know. But let's start at the start, right, and talk about your background. And we know that um, you've come from quite challenging backgrounds, I think. Maybe that's what was in, in, inspired you in the first place. Maybe you can talk about your background and how that shaped, you know, how you became in, in, in entrepreneurship. Oh, first of all, thank you for the invitation. I've been watching your show and I really like it that how you, you know, you help the entrepreneurs to uh, really have a room to share their story. Thank you for your invitation. Um, if let's say, come back to my background, um, yes, it's been very challenging, but do I think in our generation, if you ask 10 people, seven or eight also come from a very challenging background. I think that is a situation during that time. Uh, it's nothing uh, to, to really, uh, how to say, to really shout off that, oh, I come from a very challenging background so that I can become so successful today. But one of the reasons... Um, who I become, you know, who I am today. Well, how I become who I am today is, I think most importantly is this journey for me, there's so many things for me to find out about myself. And um, the unprivileged and also um, there's no opportunity to continue my study. It gives me a lot of the the, the strike because I have a lot of self-doubt. So I have a lot of self-doubts, a lot of time that I always compare myself to others. For example, when I go to school, I have no money to pay for even a public school fees. So that time put myself very, very low esteem. And for this um, you know, back to the childhood, for this kind of situation, for example, when I want to go to buy a canteen, so when I want to buy a bread, so I will choose the cheapest one. Or when I want to buy a, a fruit, I will choose the cheapest one. So this kind of, uh, I would say that I realized that myself that had been put myself so low esteem, that I, I didn't realize even I started my business. So from the, from my childhood, um, you know, the the first maybe. Ten twenty years of the this 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 uh, this journey. Is very uh, is very how do you say unconscious. I live in unconscious. So that's why when very challenging background, I wouldn't realize challenging because, I didn't know that there is a the other part of the world are so, luxury. <laughs> So probably, um, you know, that will be something that I, I think it's worth for me to, to share more about how to, how to be consciousness know where you are right now and where you want to go. I think that is, that is something I discovered for the past five, ten years. So by way of background, um, I, uh, what I understand from you is that your parents were no noodle sellers, uh, me sellers. Uh, you come from Ipoh. Um, 
and you did not, as you say, complete your education because the family just didn't have the financial means to, to uh, let you complete that. And I think a lot of kids do go through that uh, situation. It's very hard for people in that situation to come out and break free from that band. I don't know what the numbers are, you know, 10, 20, 100, one in every 10, 20, 100, maybe a thousand can succeed. Uh, but you did, and, you know, definitely hats off to you. How did you break free? How did you realize your, that you had the ability? What were the trigger points? Frankly speaking, I don't know I have that ability. Because when you, 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 you need to uh, earn a living just for the, you know, for your own surviving, that kind of situation, actually, you, you, you didn't really think about how to break free. You just make sure that you can live a bit good life so you can still continue your life. Um, I think if, let's say, the, if you want to go back to my uh, childhood when, uh, you know, when I was young, like about, I think, eight years old. Eight years old, people are, you know, still, some of them still drinking, uh, you know, Milk, milk or, <laughs> yeah. at home so I already need to go out to help my mom at the noodle store uh, at about 6am or 5am then uh, when the times come then I need to you know prepare myself go to the school so that kind of journey is, is really helped me to understand if you don't well you're so break free you know if you don't really break through you don't do any changes to your life your, life, your life is going to continue like that so it's, it's really, really, uh, I would say that it's really challenging that time. But I wasn't know it's challenging because I don't know what it's luxury. So what I understand that you went to work in, I think you were working in a clothing store, right? Mm -hmm. um, and you were doing all the, you know, all the background work. And I think you realized that that was not for you. And I think you did a couple more things after that before you started A-Star. Can you talk about that time of your life? Oh, because uh, I... I worked as a part-time when I was very young. So I have some saving and I know that uh, I need to have academic achievement. If not, then what I'm going to do after my SBN. So I, I have some saving. So with that saving, actually, I thought I could continue my diploma. So I went to uh, KL and pay for the fees with my little saving. Then I thought that when I study, then I can make a, you know, part-time money to continue my study. But it was so, so tough, you know, alone from Ipo, study in KL, and then uh, the renter is very high and uh, it's not so easy to even study and also find a job. So one semester, actually, I quit. So I quit already, then I went back to Ipo. But what can I do? Then I need to find another um, uh, more low um, fees, you know, more, uh, more affordable college at Ipoh. So I continue my study. And also I work for two, three jobs. So morning I work as a data entry and then I go to school. And then evening I uh, become a part-time selling uh, this um, it's boutique, selling uh, clothes to, uh, to, to more mature lady. Uh, not, don't say older, <laughs> so mature lady. And I found that it's, it's, it's no problem for me to sell anything, but it's just that way is my passion. So I don't think that is my passion. So after that, I, I quit my job um, and also quit my study. I, I dropped out from my college because I think the study is not for me. Then I start to explore other things. And uh, what were those things that you explored? Explore um, Cyber Cafe. <laughs> <laughs> You started a cyber cafe. You you worked no, at a I, cyber cafe. No, I, I, I didn't really work, but I like to play game. So while I'm studying and also um, uh, as a part time, I just like to play game. So I'm a, so dim as a Starcraft queen at that time because I play day and night. I know how to command, and this is something that I really like and so addicted. So one day I met someone in a cyber cafe, that she, he told me that hey. You know, uh, we have a very small IT company startup that we're looking for a admin, admin club. So, do, do you, are you interested to interview? Do you want to join? That is how I embarked to my IT uh, tech industry. That is my first job. 
Wow, sometimes, you know, um, so for parents who have gamer kids and then they want the kids to stop gaming, sometimes maybe they shouldn't because it takes them to a path where then it opens more doors, right? Um, so, so from there, um, what happened? So I went for interview and then uh, he immediately hired me. So I told them that I, I still study. So can you give me a bit of a space so that I can, after my school, then I come to work? Or maybe I leave a, um, a work earlier, so I negotiate that. And it, it, they are very good, they are accommodating me, accommodating me. So after that, I started this uh, so-called uh, first IT job as an admin clerk. But after sometimes I cannot cope because while you study and also your work for full time is very, very tough. So that is the time that I really quit my um, uh, halfway of diploma study. Hmm. Then I start my first uh, you know, job in the... So I still remember that time. IT is very, very new to me. And I have to learn, even at main club, I have to learn how to assemble the PC. So I have to study where is a slot for VGA card, where is a slot for RAM, where is a hard disk slot, so where is a cable, all these things. So it's very fun for me and because I, I, didn't, I didn't study that before. So that is the first I really get connected to this IT and tech industry. So as you say in those days, uh, it's not about um, big dreams or luxurious life. It's all about survival, right? Survival. And even the idea of being your own boss and being an entrepreneur, did it even enter your mind or were you just trying to just get by day to day? No. Uh, because when I was young, there's one dream, one of the dreams that really, really, you know, burned inside me is I want a home. I want a house. Because we are living in a very uh, small room, four of us, that time. It's, a, it's, a, it's like um, my grandfather's house that we have a few family that we only allocate one room for us. That, I live that house, I live into that house for 20 years. You can imagine, you know, 20 years old girls still live in that house. So that is something that burned my desire that I really want to, you know, get out from this house. I want to buy a house for my parents. I want to have a better living space. Because of that, uh, that uh, goal, because of that dream, that really, um, I would do everything just to find money, you know, to buy my first house. So that is my desire at that time. Never think about, I want to be entrepreneurs or whatever. So how did the journey go on from there? <laughs> you know, um, this is something that I didn't realize I'm a very um, a good in selling. So give me anything I can sell. And after some, after a few months that I... I I think I didn't really do a good job for uh, admin club. <laughs> I even wrote, uh, every time I wrote, you know, they asked me to write a check, I would sure make mistake one. Just don't know why I, I couldn't, you know, write a you know, proper check. So that's why I think that this is not for me and then I would, would like to quit already. But my uh, previous uh, boss that offered me that, oh, why not you try your sales? I said, okay, let's try it. And this is really uh, how I started my career. Very fast, I became a top sales in the company. And that time, if you remember, it's 2000.com uh, burst, but our computers hardware are selling very, very well. So we selling one computer has really made a lot of profit. And so that's why my boss can give me a lot of commission. From that onwards, actually, I earn a lot of good money for my saving to buy my first house when I was 23 years old. Yeah, actually coming to um, to finding one's passion or one's ability. Sometimes the path there comes from really unexpected circumstances. For you, it came from being put in a job which you're not good to good in, and then finding that you're good in another part of the the business, right? Which is in sales. Now a lot of people find sales very hard, right? Um, to to what are your tips to people to be a good salesperson? What what does it take to be a good salesman? Sales actually is a service, if you ask me. So, because the 20 years ago and 20 years later is different. Now, people can sell just by clicking a button, right? So, back then, sales actually is a service. It's how you connect with people. How you make your client feel that you, you are selling something that is what they want. Or even 
it's not uh, uh, necessary, I want to buy it now, but because they connect with you, they just want to support you, it's one of the selling methods as well. So, as a salesperson, I would say that you must enjoy having a conversation. If you don't enjoy having a conversation, for example, some of the sales, uh, you know, sales person I hire, it's very difficult for to ask them to make a phone call. Even can you could you please find out what customer need, just by one phone call to find out what you need and give it to you. It's so simple, but some of them is not design. This is not not their pattern. They just don't enjoy the conversation. If you are not enjoy the conversation with a stranger or with someone that you're not close with, uh, it will be very challenging for you to be a salesperson. So for me, I can talk to everyone. I can talk to, you know, from the top to the bottom, everyone I can talk to. There's no problem for me. So you must, be, uh, you must have ability to communicate and you enjoy the conversation. Yeah, fun. social skills are so important mm -hmm. in this day and age, right? Because if you don't have those social skills, you can't connect with your fellow human beings and you can't, even help you know help them in whatever deficiencies they have. So I switch a bit of a um, direction. Social skill, there is a real, there is a fake. There is a lot of people have a tremendous social skill. They can easily to have a very shallow conversation with mm. you. But what I mean is not that one. What I mean is your authenticity. You really honest. You let people feel that you you want to connect with them, and they feel they're comfortable with you. So social skill, I think, is not difficult to learn. But how to connect with people and how to really, um, you know, to to be yourself, that to just say that this is what I'm offering. Um, you know, it will good for you. Um, do you want to have a try and all this? Just by this few conversation, mm. I'm sure you as a you as a human, you will literally feel that this is. Really, a real, from the heart, lah. From the heart, yeah. Or this is just a very shallow conversation. How do you deal with rejection? Because in sales, rejection rates are very high, right? Like, ah, oh, don't talk to me. I don't want to know. Until now, also have a lot of rejection. Yeah, yeah. It's hard, right? Yes. And then come back and come back again with energy and the same positivity. That's hard. Well, I would say that at the young age, when I was young, it's very difficult for me to deal with rejection because I'm very self, you know, low, low self-esteem. I have a lot, of, now I only realize, so last time I, I think that, I'm, you know, I a very, uh, have a lot of self-doubts. So when there's a rejection come, okay, yeah, you know, I tell you already, you, you, you're not deserved. This is keep coming back to me that I, I use a lot of energy to overcome it. I use a lot of I don't know others, but I use a lot of energy to overcome. No, I'm worth it. I can keep trying. I can, you know, still pursue my dream and all this. So at the beginning, when you don't have, um, uh, you don't understand yourself enough, you don't discover yourself enough, you don't conscious, that rejection is very difficult. But when it comes to now, uh, if I got rejected, I would say thank you. And... I will find out why, how can how can I you know improve myself? How can I do better? Or maybe this is this is a wrong selection. I select the wrong people to offer something. So I will find out from a different angle, and I won't feel uh, any any uh, hard feeling when people reject me. How did you find? Where did you get the source of the strength to come back from rejection when you are starting out, and you don't have a lot of um, let's just say an army behind you lah. Your parents are busy working, savings are thin, maybe your friends are in university somewhere, and you're all alone, right? How do you find the energy to just like, okay, come on, one more time, one more time? Where does it come from? <laughs> Very good question, actually. So I found that uh, when I get older, uh, not that old, I know I might sell, but it's just that when you, you know, your, your journey is from uh, here to here already, so I found that my energy is even more than the before. So the drive is seeing that what I did before, I have a lot of doubts. I thought it's not right. I thought it's a wrong direction. I thought it's a wrong decision. But when I refer back to my past, every single thing I did, I wouldn't change anything. I just proud of myself. I just happy that I did that. So when I refer back to my past, 
yes, this is something that I didn't uh, agree. Even myself also don't convince that yeah, I should I should uh, done that. But now I look back, yes, this is the right thing to do. So I will use the same philosophy. What I did right now, even people are reject me. People don't believe in me. But I think after five ten years later, they look. I look back. This is a hundred percent the right thing that you should do, Natalie. Mm. Because without mistakes, you don't learn. Mm. Like the German philosopher, I, I love to say this guy, right? Because this German philosopher, Nietzsche, his famous saying was that that which does not kill you only makes you stronger. So if every mistake you make, you get stronger and stronger. And like as Robert Kwok said, you know Robert Kwok? He says that now, you know, through all his hardships and all his difficulties, he's got these scales, right, which make him so strong. He's impervious to challenges now. Any challenge comes, he'll just overcome it because he's so strong. After decades and decades of setbacks and challenges. And that's what happens, right? Because without those difficulties, without falling down, you cannot get stronger and stronger and come back, right? I, I use a different perspective. Last time, I thought stronger is something that I'm very proud of, very pride. So what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, right? Mm, mm. Uh, that was about maybe five years ago. So after this pandemic, after this uh, lockdown at home, you know, two, three years, you have a lot of self reflect. I don't claim if this is strong. I would say it just by flow. Because strong means you need to use a lot of energy to fight. Mm. It will get tired and it will be difficult for you to continue the journey because life is too short. And just I just first half only, now it just started a second half. If I convince myself, oh, this is strong, I'm a strong woman and all this, I'll, I think every day I will consume a lot of energy to just fight against the law. Now it's different. So I just want to um, work with the flow. If this is not works, I just turn to the other way. Mm. And that is more effortless for me. Yeah, it's mm. like, you know, it's like Aikido. Have you ever tried Aikido? It's like the martial art, the Japanese uh, yes, martial art. Yes, yes. You just go the energy, you just deflect it, right? And then you find another path. It's beautiful. And what you say is very true. So then how did A-Star start? Um, you know, when, how did that journey begin? Okay, back to my, uh, I, ha I make a lot of uh, good income because I'm top sales. I bought my first house, then my income just flow in because the, the industry is booming and I'm a good salesman, a saleswoman. And after that, um, you know, living in Ipoh and make a five-figure income is, that time is, is a big bad. deal. It's yeah. a big deal. So I use all the money, except, um, I use most of the money to take care of my family. Besides that, I use my, you know, uh, portion of it, I travel. So I like to travel. So I've been to many countries when I was very young. And I have one um, dream that I want to accomplish because I'm so influenced by this Hollywood movie. So I have an American dream. I want to go to US. But I don't want to just be a tourist. I want to live there. So how I'm going to live there? Well, you know, my income is here. So I just make a very, um, that time a very firm decision that I want to resign because I have enough saving for me to go to US and resign and I bought a one-way ticket by myself. One-way ticket? That's not bad. Yeah, by myself. Because I, I, I make sure that my parents are being taken, off, taken care of. So I... Bought a one-way ticket and resigned. I told my boss that, okay, I'm not sure I'm coming back or not, but uh, if I come back, you know, we will talk. If not, then I will see you in some time. So. I'm surprised the US government that you went because <laughs> the risk of you going there and not coming back and being, you know, an illegal is very high, right? So, but I guess in those days, it was different. Now. Oh, it's, it's, everything is legal. Nothing is illegal. <laughs> For me, um, I use a proper channel to, to go in and then I found a job in second day. Mm. Yes. So where were you? East Coast or West New, Coast? New York, New York. New York. So New York is a place that I want to go. So it's so many, you know, influenced by those movie. I think you know Hollywood mm. movie. So I, I just sat down one day and second day I start to find a job. So I'm the person cannot stop, just stop and relax and you know sabatika. I can't. So I just um found a job second day, and after that, um I very happy and enjoy my life. It's a very big difference from my Ipoh life. So I gained 5 kg <laughs> because the portion, you know, huge, Ipoh huge, and yeah. uh, New York is just a state, you know, itself is, is like cheaper. And I uh, have a very good life. And just now come back to your legal question, the six months you have to leave the country. 
So at that time, actually, my, my employer offered me, do you want to do a visa here so I could help you? But because I consider, a uh, bit considered my parents is getting old. So, and then this is a place that is difficult for immigrants, especially that time as an Asian or Chinese, to really to be seen, to have opportunity to really strike for my career. So it's, it's not a, a, a place for us to really want to build our business or career. So that's why I decided to go, uh, go back to Ipoh and then um, I, I reject that offer. I go back to Ipoh and then I go back to my previous company and become a sales again. So you could imagine that when Ipoh, you live in Ipoh and you live in New York, you can imagine that, hmm. that contrast, right? So that time, actually, I, I got depression. Oh. Yeah, when I came back from New York, I got depression. Quite, I cannot, I cannot handle that depression. It's very big contrast of my life. The depression was brought on by? It's like your life is, is it's big contrast. So you, you experienced the, the Big Apple mm -hmm. and then you came back and it's like, Nothing Apple, here. Yes, right. it's yeah. nothing here. So I don't know what I want. I I so quite hopeless. I don't know what's my future. I don't know how I'm going to move on. What's this next? It's a lot of questions, a lot of doubts, a lot of uncertainty. And that is a time that I, you know, besides I overcome my depression, of course, uh, you know, I did a lot of, you know, uh, things to, to really overcome my depression. And I uh, getting improved. Then I make a decision I don't want to stay in Nippo, so I want to maybe choose a nearer place, which is KL. So when I want to go to KL, I don't want to work. Why not I just start a business? That is how I started ASTA. Do you think entrepreneurship is, is born or is it bred? What do you think? <laughs> Definitely, for me, it's not born because at the beginning, uh, you know, I, I didn't plan to be entrepreneurs. I don't know the entrepreneurs mean meaning that time. As entrepreneur, I just know business law. I know business owner. I know employers, but I don't know entrepreneurs. So for me, uh, the hunger is important. If let's say you want to be an entrepreneur just because you think it's a sexy, you think it's everybody you know will praise you, will admire you because you're entrepreneurs. But if you are not hungry enough, you don't have to try. I think it's very difficult for you to sustain. Maybe it's easier for you to do a startup. Maybe it's easier for you to start for the first three years. But if you don't have that hunger, you don't have the. Just now you ask, what's the reason? You know, why make you? You know, what is the reason make you want to break free? So that reason, the compelling reason, is very important. If you don't have that, just because other people is doing, just because it's trendy, you do it. I would say it's very difficult to sustain. So for you, where did the hunger come from? Because uh, I want to prove, we, when when I was, uh, you know, I, I so told you that we live in a small room, you know, with a few family. But in a way, you made it, right? You you made good money. Um, your top salesman, sales girl, whatever. Uh, you bought your house. Your parents are kind of like sorted, right? You can go back to that life, you know. Um, yeah. Some people, a lot of people will just rest on their laurels. Say, so, okay, la, I can make good money, ma. Proven really, ma. Right? Maybe you're going to work in a big organization. Right? The hunger maybe is not really there anymore. But for you it was. Right? The, I also thought that uh, it will you know, move on. So I, after you know, some time, at that time, I actually it's not, haven't reconciled yet. It's not, it's not sort out. Because that is something that is, is my childhood, which, is, which I really didn't realize that how the childhood do, can influence you the rest of the life. So because when you are... You are when you come from the, this background and all your relatives or friends that, you know, how they treated you and, you know, you, you won't be someone who succeed, you know, you will be, you cannot make it and all this, um, all this, uh, how to say, when, we call it prejudice, when you, you know, receive all these things. Actually, that one kept inside me for so long that I want to make my parents proud. They don't see you up, lah. Is yeah, that right? Yeah. They don't see you as a person of status, yeah, just, right? Yeah, they just looked out at you. Yeah. 
no, I don't have any anger. So now I'm peace. But it's just at that time because this this treatment actually made me. It's not about me. It's about mm. my parent. Mm. So I'm, I'm I love my parents. So, so because of that, I want them to look good. I want them to feel proud. I want them to earn back their pride. That what I can do for them. So the hunger and the drive is truly is for them. So that's why um, when they pass, uh, my my parents both pass already. When they pass, actually, my especially my mother pass is so difficult for me, because after after she pass, who you want to fight for? Mm. Who you want to prove? So that time actually is also a very down time for me. That what is next? Yeah. So how do you overcome that? Because uh, your reason for pushing your, your you know is, is no longer there, right? So I started my discovery, self discovery journey, mm-hmm. which I um, you know find my mentor in life mm. that um, I. It's not about them anymore. It's about me. It's about what I want, what I want to create, what kind of life I want, what I'm passionate with. It's no longer want to prove to anyone. So that that is a that's a big discovery for myself. And uh, what year was that? 2016. Quite recent, lah. So basically, until until about seven years ago, everything that you did was for other people, not for yourself. Exactly, exactly. Do you find that strange? I mean, for for you, in a way, this is being selfless, right? Because a lot of people they are, they start with number one first, and then they expand outwards. But for you, it's like the rest of the world, the family, and then you last. That that's quite unusual. I for for some people, not all, but some people. Yeah, I quite I I I don't know is rare or not, but I think a lot of people also put themselves themselves last. So this is a very good topic actually. I I don't mind to share that when you really do everything for others, people you forget about yourself, right? You can't take care of anyone, because that time also I I'm, I'm into a very low, um, quite down, quite down because. The business is doing extremely well. Twenty seventeen, my twenty eighteen, my business is doing extremely well. And make a very good you know, profit. But that time actually is the most difficult time for me to overcome that emotion. Who I should prove. You know, who am I? Mm. So if let's say if I can discover that earlier, you know, if let's say someone that you are striving for your entrepreneurship. So I think the first thing you really need to ask is, you know, what's your reason? Of course, the reason is actual, yeah, right? What's because your yeah. I've heard it time and time again. People who had this goal in their life, and once they achieve that goal, I mean, for me, the most obvious example, which you may not know, is this guy called Tyson Fury, right? Tyson Fury is a British boxer. He became heavyweight champion of the world like four years ago. Um, but that was his big goal, um, and once he achieved that by beating Vladimir Klitschko in the in you know in in the championship fight. He entered depression because he 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 achieved what he wanted. That was his lifetime ambition. Then once he hit that goal, there's nothing else to live for. So he was on the verge of suicide, you know, this guy. And he, he came back. He he found the strength and the will to come back. And now he's heavy heavyweight champion of the world again. But time and time again, I hear the same story. Once you hit your goal or once you hit your ambition, what's next, right? So to come back from that, even though he, and he was very rich already, you know, this guy. He was really worth like fifty million pounds, right? So money is no longer the factor, and I think that was the same for you. 2017, 2018, business doing really well. Money, money, maybe not so much of an issue anymore. So what, what's that? How, how did you come back from that? And you've suffered depression in the past, right? Yeah. And depression, no joke, man. Depression <laughs> is. A lot of people say, oh, depression. Oh, what? Well, they dismiss it. They're very dismissive of depression until you cannot depression, then you don't know how serious it can be, man. Isn't it true? Oh, uh, so thanks to the depression. Now I know what is depression. Hmm. You know, when you know how to overcome it, you will not worry about it come back again. How? I didn't say that. I didn't say that I, it won't. Uh, it's just that when once you know what is this about, why you have this this you know come suddenly hit you, then you know how to prevent also. And come back to just now, uh, what you mentioned about the story that you achieve, you know, you achieve what you want, and then you become so empty. So I would like to share this story uh, for my life, you know, it's a real life story. You know, I won a lot of awards, right? As a woman entrepreneur, uh, that past few years, you know, that I think since 2016, I won a lot of awards, uh, quite um, 
Privilege Award, right? Uh, Prestige Award. So every time I go on stage, I went on stage to receive the award. I'm so proud of myself, my team, you know, all cheers. Like, this is the proudest moment I had. And then when, you know, after that we celebrate, went home. Every time that night, I'm so empty. After we received the award, I didn't tell anyone. Why? Why every time I'm so empty when I received the biggest achievement? Then, uh, there is some, sometimes I didn't want also. It's not every time I won. So there is a, sometimes I didn't want to I win the award, right? That night, actually, I have so much fire. Okay, what I can do more, <laughs> to achieve more. But those I won, then I feel so empty. And I also share with you, remember the few months ago, I won this uh, Woman Excellent, uh, one of the top 20 Woman Excellent Award. So this time, it's different because I think my, my life, everything perspective changed. So I evolved. So this time I went on stage. I'm so, uh, you know, appreciate myself, appreciate the team, everything. I'm so flow and go on stage and, you know, went on stage and receive a award. And I came down and then happy, celebrate. And went home, I sleep. What's changed? What changed in you? Well, because you, you see the life is, is not this and that. It's the journey. So after this, it will be next journey. So you just need to embrace and, you know, and appreciate what you have right now. And then you move on to the next journey. So life is an infinite game, you know, the Simon Sinek. Infinite game. It's not about who is the winner right now and you're forever the winner, right? If I say I won in future, they still have someone better than me. So why I want to compare? Why I want to be the the you know make myself so so miserable because comparing myself with who Mark Zuckerberg or Bill Gates? Why I want to do that? I just compare with myself because I am who I am. I'm I'm doing something which is it's, it's meaning for me to exist in this universe, this earth, this mother earth, because I bring the value or probably I can, you know, just help people surrounding or people who don't knew, know me or don't know me. I think that's just enough for me. I don't want to compare. Yeah, the back to the energy flow thing again. Mm. Um, you know, uh, people, uh, they, they can't help but compare themselves with other people, right? The mm. whole hierarchy system, it's, it's inbred in all of us. Where we sit on the, on the scale of hierarchies, how near to the top we are or how near to the bottom we are. Very few people can overcome that. Even the oldest guy still says, you know, if you got 5 billion, ah, oh, bugger, that guy got 7 billion. Bill, got, Bill Gates will compare with Elon Musk. Ah. <laughs> right? Okay. I got 10 Ferrari, he got 12 Ferrari. Shit, man. I yeah. got 2 less Ferrari. Yeah. Seriously, right? Or the guy who got earned 8,000 ringgit a month, Bugger, my classmate making 12k a month. Yeah. Shit, man. Yeah. Then he feel like shit, right? How do you overcome that? I didn't say I totally zero compare. Well, I, I'm still a human. But yeah. it's just that that doesn't last long. 30 seconds, 60 seconds, gone. The comparison thing? Yeah. You, why you want to hold that emotion for a long time? But doesn't mean you cannot have that. We are human. Why you want to hold back? As I said, don't make you strong. Just make you flow. If you're strong, then you try to against what you really feel, what's your, your inner feeling. So don't, don't be so against that feeling. It's just that let this come and then you just don't let... You know this is not a good for you. You know you're not happy. You don't compare. harbor it. La. Don't just... Don't prolong it. La. So after some time, you know, short period of time, just let it go and then move forward to others, focus on other things. So the challenges for you, right? Um, you're a single um, owner business. Okay, no co-founder, no partner. So decisions all, one person, I, th I think, right? So a lot of investors, um, they tend to not invest in single owner businesses. Why? Because there's also concentration risk, right? There's also decision making risk. Only one person making the decisions. That in itself is a challenge. Then you're in tech. Tech is not an easy business because it moves so fast, right? And then also you're a female. Now, some people might say being a female entrepreneur has its challenges as well. So filter on filter on filter, Quite unique already, where you are, right? How have you dealt with those challenges? <laughs> are you giving me a chance to pitch myself? <laughs> <laughs> Don't know. <laughs> so, uh, come back to just now, you say it's a sole founder. While I see a lot of 
core founder or you know two three founder also fail. I think that is a lot of a percentage of this kind of business also fail. So, if you ask me, the the failure rate is not a so or or you have a multiple owners. Is about who you know who you dealing with, and ah,、uh, come back to your second question. I mean tech, yes, tech is very exciting, but it's also a very high risk business because you're so competitive. But I would say that what you you I want to what what is what you just need to refer back to my past. If I'm a startup, if I'm just In the business for three years, yes, probably you know, Natalie, you're in high risk. But I'm in the business for fifteen years, and refer back to all the things that I did. I just never make it to the stage that I want, but didn't feel. Still continue is going, and some of them make to a certain stage, which is、um, I'm quite happy with. So if I have a track record that proven that. I'm not.、Uh, I'm serious. I'm committed. I think the woman factors or tech factors or single founder factors is is not an issue. It depends on how passionate of this uh, uh, business owner, and then、uh, what's her age? Is still young, got energy or not? <laughs> and is she、uh, really walk the talk? Because whatever I say, I I I did it. I, none of them that I say I don't do it. So is she really want to talk? Is she really committed? Or probably、um, one of the factor is she understand what she doing or not? Is Natalie no way is directional? If she have the clarity, and people just come in to give me a push and support to reach you know ten times of the business, I think that one is not a risk. That is very exciting journey. So where's the exciting next stage in business? I know for a fact that you're involved in. I, I think on a personal as well as a professional level, you're involved in the next stage of of IT uh, of of social media, Web three point zero, if you like. You have a lot of time. You've actually started your own、um, businesses in 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 Web three.、Um, you've also got your your NGO,、uh, kind of like your CSR exercise with the、uh, artists in in creative industry.、Um, What is involved in that side of the world that people should know about?、Uh, thanks for the question because many people ask actually what you're doing because、uh, I know you're in tech but you involved in here and this. So whatever I do actually is very well connected. When I want to do something that which is really jump to the you know different things. So A Star is my core business, which is we are a B two B business. We are S S I. We serving about few thousand customer, and we are more focused on the work. For、um, environment, workforce environment, network infra, and I also because of the Adobe because we are the the only、uh, Adobe Platinum partner in Malaysia, so we supply more than、uh, you know the largest market share in the in, in this region. So when it come to the software that I truly believe, who doesn't need software to scale the business, right? Especially the cloud based and subscription. So if you need the software, the digital tools to scale the business, first of all, is your people really understand how to operate the software? Is the university and edu-、um, maybe college are teaching them? May not. So that is how I come into the pictures. So the software are so、um, um, important for the business to scale, to operate. Then the next is how I can make sure that your your employees know how to operate. So that's why I brought in another business which is called a micro credential, mostly focus on the digital software which is Microsoft, Adobe, Autodesk, so that we can teach them how to operate. We we are not from adults. We from a education level. We from a maybe higher education. So we also working with a lot of university to help them for this micro credential so that. The student graduate not only own the diploma or degree, they also have a worldwide recognized certificate, because the Microsoft and Adobe all decide by the Microsoft is worldwide recognized. They can serve the employers. They can serve any jobs that across the group, even they stay in Malaysia. And because of that, we are very engaged with the creative communities, which is creative talents, designer, and also production company, design company, multimedia agency. 
then they they have a problems to recruit the talent. And the talent also don't know where to guide, get their job. So we come up with this social enterprise called Creative Crowd Communities. So the goal is to bridge out the businesses and the creative talents. We provide the education and then we do a job placement. We train them so that they can connect the dots. We bring in the government, we bring in the education as well. So that is the whole community. This is community service. that We, we have about 6,000 6, talent in our platform right now. What is your feedback about education? Because the traditional thinking is that you um, go to high school, get the SPM or O-level or A-levels, right? Uh, um, and then you go to university, then you spend three years in university, you spend a ton of money, <laughs> you come out and you get, you know, you get a job which either doesn't pay so well or you don't even get a job because the job market is so tight. Because what you learned in university doesn't fit the job market per se. So I, my sense is that the micro-credential market is, is very good for both the parents and also for the children because I think micro-credentials micro are shorter in, in tenure, I think more affordable, and much more specific to the job function. So my thinking as a parent now is that I should really look at the space in terms of maybe my kids should go through micro-credentials, get a job, and lifelong learning to constantly find skills to fit the job requirements because jobs are evolving so fast, so quickly, all the time now, that what's the point of spending five years in medical school, come out and be a GP, and you don't earn a lot of money. It's very hard. And, you know, so many jobs are not being uh, um, rendered extinct, like lawyers are being overtaken by AI. Um, doctors also by overtaken by AI. You know, so, so, so what, what is your feedback on the education sector in this regard? Um, I'm involved in this micro-credential for the past uh, seven years. So I, I un roughly understand um, you know, where this come from and how, what is the future for this. It will not replace the, it will not totally replace the academic achievement, tertiary education, it will not. So still get the degree? So, still, so if let's say you are, talk about Asian, our problem is we don't know what we want. If let's say the kids, when after the SPM, after maybe 17 years old, okay, I want to be a doctor, I want to be an engineer, I want to be... Oh, that one is more easy to identify, but most of the students, they spend three years or four years of degree, and usually they, the, the job they got is nothing related to what they study. I think you, you, this is very Absolutely, common. yeah. So... If let's say the education, a micro-credential can come in earlier, I would say maybe before uh, 17 years old, let's say high school. If the micro-credential can start to introduce them during the high school, actually will give them a better perspective. What is this what I like? If let's say you identify what is your direction, so we're not talking about the professional like doctor or engineer. So we're talking about the general overall uh, jobs. So, for example, like sales, marketing, or maybe uh, um, management or finance. So, if let's say you really know what you want because you're exposed to this micro potential, because you experience it, it's very easy for you to know what is your path next. Uh, that you can make a decision. You want to go for degree, diploma, or just go for a certain uh, micro potential or maybe certain credential that you want to pursue your career. That will save you a lot of time and money. So I would say, it's, 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 a, it's education is it's because our education system is still very based on, you know, science, PC, accounting, you know, Chinese, uh, Malay, very, very fixed, condensed, and very limited condensed that we fit to our kids. So they don't know what they want in, in future. That's why they need to go to they thought they go to university and, you know, complete the diploma and degree, they will find out what they want. But after that, they regret because it's, it's a few years, is already gone. And that's yeah. the golden years, you know. That is how I built my career. So I didn't encourage you to, to like me, that, you know, college about, but that is, that is the golden age for me, which is from 20 to 23. I built up my career to identify which path and where I want to go. Because this is the age that you have a lot of guts. You will dare to explore so many things that you won't you know, fear of fail failing. 
So what is your advice to the 20-year-old now that has just got even less, maybe 18, 19, just finished A-levels, just finished STPM, right? What is your advice to them? Should you pursue the degree? Should you get your micro-credentials and then explore from there? Should you... Uh, what, 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 what do they do? I don't think a one comment can fit all. Mm. So I, I don't want to give a general comment or so. Mm. But it's just that before 18 years old, you should go to explore yourself by you know joining the boot camp. There's so many convenient uh, online course here. So just throw yourself out, you know, to, to explore every single thing that which you think this is not you. Because people always identify themselves that this is you and this is not you, right? So you do and you don't do, you will identify yourself that, oh, this is me and this is not me. So when you think this is not me, and the more you think this is not you, you should go to explore. To, to validate, okay, this is not you. This is not what I want. Then you validate and you move forward. So I would say that that exposure and that discovery journey have to start high school, not after 18 years old. Just like how you went into becoming an admin clerk, then you realize <laughs> admin clerk is not for you. Go into sales, right? That is right? after high school. Yeah. So yeah, that's after high school. So what is your advice? I know you. Um, I know advice can be quite formula nowadays, lah, right? Okay. Um, but advice from the heart, right? For um, aspiring entrepreneurs, uh, top three, top four bits of advice you would give to people. So, um, entrepreneurs or, or for entrepreneurs, or for people who want to be an entrepreneur or people who let's just don't start know what with they entrepreneur want. Entrepreneur and then life advice. So let's say you are graduate, you you are young, you're twenty over years old. And then you have a dream, you look at someone, you know, that um, has been successful in their life, you want to be one of them, and you want to start your own business. Um, I think the most important is, as I say, you, is this, you're hungry enough or not. And then also, before you start your first startup, right, please go to work for someone else first. Don't quickly, after your you know graduation day then you okay i want to raise fun you know come up with this sexy pitch and and look for a business um you know funder i don't don't say you know all doesn't work but it's just that work for someone first and if let's say your job um your if let's say your job is is not um according to your expectation i think that is the best experience that you need to go through before you start a business if you have a smooth job, you're very happy, employer is very good, colleague are very good, actually you don't learn a lot. So go for the tough job. I didn't say that you, you want to abuse yourself, you know, go to this tough environment, but it's just that, just flow. If let's say you got a good job, yes, congratulate, but you still need to work for someone first and then, uh, you know, before you start business. Don't, don't make a Mark Zuckerberg as a life Example. He is a very rare example that, you know, during a college, he already started a business. So a lot of people have a wrong perspective. It's, it's not everyone like him, but I would say that if you could, you can work for someone else at least three years. At like what Jack years. Ma said. Like, remember Jack Ma a few years ago in the symposium? He said about how his advice, I think he talked about how people have three broad stages of life, right? Yeah. Uh, and in the first stage is you go and work in a small company yes. where you do everything. Yes. Sales, marketing, admin, finance, everything. Then you learn. Then you find your skill. Then you build your skill until your second stage. And then in your second stage, which is when you have a skill and you've got a network, then you monetize it. You go and start your own business. As you say, it's quite similar to what you're saying. Now. <coughs> what about life advice, Natalie? What's your advice to people? Very broad. Um... So my advice may not apply to uh, young kids, but maybe people who resonate, people who are watching this uh, episode, I assume they are mid-age. Lah. I assume they're mid-age, you know, they want to find themselves, they want to find happiness. Um, I think the most important is you must understand what you want. So everything you do in your life or your relationship, family, uh, business, a career, you must have a compelling reason. And that reason actually is not uh, who you want to prove. 
if you know your why and what, right, the how is, is so easy to find out. So this is the most difficult, difficult part that you want to find your why, why you want to do this. And a lot of people mistaken the why and the activity. So for example, I'll give you an example. Um, let's say you want to uh, work so hard because you want to make your million dollars, right? So you want to make a lot of money, million dollars. And what is this million dollars mean to you? So million dollars is a reward, is a is a very tangible reward. But what is this tangible reward means to you? So end up what we want is okay. Well, I have million dollars, so I can do this initiative. I can help a million of people, or maybe I do this. I can impact you know this group of people, and privileged people. And then if I impact this unprivileged uh you know people, it make me feel my my life is so meaningful, and. My life purpose is I want to give hopes. I want to demonstrate to people that there is a hopes in their life so that everyone can pursue their you know their journey. So that is your goal. But it's not million dollars. So that's why people mistaken the goal and the reward actually is is is, is different. Yeah, Bridget Branson always said that money is just something that you um, use to achieve something else. It's a means, not the, it's not the goal, mm. right? You know Richard Benson at Virgin Group. Um, but a lot of people want to do business and get successful because they want to make money and they want to buy the big house and they buy a big, big car and show off to their friends that they're successful, right? So I think I've got to ask you as well, what does success mean to you? Well, I would say that every night I, I have a good sleep and also Next morning, I woke up with full of energy and hopes and uh, um, positive and um, uh, good vibes. And also, with this energy, I would say that uh, I can do a lot of things to help people. But before I help people, I must help myself first. So the success mean to me is how you demonstrate you yourself. Let's say you put yourself on the stage. So let's say this is a life, your is your is your stage, right? So how you perform yourself is very important. So it's not about just showing showing your good side, you know, your 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 successful, your life, you know, you how many awards you get, how much money you make. It's not about that. You also have to show the tough side. I mean what I mean is authentic. So Everyone came to this world have a meaning. So for me is I just my successful is like when I overcome all these challenges and I demonstrate how to overcome it and how to overcome with the joyful, happy, um, flow, this kind of a, a state or emotion, then I will give others people uh, you know a hope that if you face these challenges you also can use this this way. So I just want to, you know, as play my role. So that's why I don't compare myself with others. All those, you know, if let's say my business is, for example, you know, 50 million. You know, when I, last time when I look at other businesses, wow, this one, 100 million. When I was 10 million, I look at people, 100 million, 200 million. I look at myself so small. So I don't know where to hide, you know, the corner, you know, I'm not there to talk to him. Because I look at myself so small, because I compare myself with him. But so that's why, to me, it's not about comparing. It's about you as a 10 million stage, right? You play a 10 million stage role. Why you want to compare? And this role got so many people. It's a majority market. It's majority people looking at you. So that's why, to success to me is how I perform, you know, how I demonstrate a life should be. Okay. You've alluded to this already uh, a bit earlier, but I want to ask you as a closing remark, uh, Natalie. You've come from a place of many challenges and many difficulties, many sacrifices, right? Would you change anything in your life to get to where you are? Would, would you like to have done anything differently? Would you like to have life given you an easier hand? <laughs> First of all, we cannot change. <laughs> That's a fact. Second is if let's say I have a choice, you know, I have a you know I have a choice to change, I will not change also. Yeah, I will not change because 
all this is is so meaningful. It's a, that's why I say it's a stage of your life. It's a, a stage for you, and this is part of your performance. If you change, your show is not good already. <laughs> People don't want to watch already. And what's next for you? Last question. What's next for you? In the business or what? I guess, yeah. Well, um, I think we reached to the stage. Uh, we have organic, uh, organically grown our company for past fifteen years, and we reached to the stage that uh, we have very solid background. For example, even pandemic hit, I would say that our business is uh, COVID proof because our sales still grow. Uh, for the past two three years, even it's very tough. We think ta- talent, all this is very tough, but our sales, our top line is still growing. And when come to you can overcome this pandemic, this crisis. There's proof that your business has reached a certain stage that is very solid, and it's a right, um, it's a right direction. It's a right business. Of course, you don't want to waste it. What you reach, you know, you reach to this stage. So the next one, of course, I want to take the business to a next level. We want to. 10x uh, of our valuation, and you know, exit will be you no. Know, the exit mean doesn't mean I don't I don't want to go continue business means, you know, IPO could be one of the option as well. So we hope that we we can reach there, you know, in three years time. Okay, fantastic. Mm-hmm. Good luck with that plan, Leslie. Come here. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> right, fair, fair.